Hey guys, in this video, I'm trying to explain uh, how we can create uh, AWS Transit Gateway so that can enable communication between uh, multiple VPCs or like uh, on-premise uh, network with a single gateway. So as you are aware, like uh, we have VPC pairing that can enable communication between uh, multiple VPCs. But VPC pairing is actually non-transitive pairing. So uh, let's see what exactly that non-transitive pairing means. Let's assume you have VPC uh, A here and you have VPC B and uh, you have VPC C. Now, if VPC A want to communicate with VPC B, manually you need to create a root here. And if VPC A want to communicate with VPC C, you manually need to enable uh, a peering connection here. VPC C want to connect with VPC B, you can manually create a peering connection here. So in future, if you create another VPC, so again, if you want to enable communication with VPC C, you need to create one. If you want to enable communication with VPC B, you need to create another peering connection. And if you want to enable communication with VPC A manually, again, you need to create it. So for small network, uh, this is okay. So, but if you are dealing with, with large set of networks, so this uh, looks clumsy or it looks complex to manage uh, these uh, networks by using VPC pairing. So if you observe, this is a diagram with um, VPC pairing and uh, to without transit gateway. So these all pairings need, like these all VPCs need VPC pairings here. This is a symbol of VPC pairing. And uh, when coming to transit gateway, so it's a service. So that, that uh, gave a single point of uh, contact for all our VPC to transit or like uh, to enable communication. So how many VPCs we have here? Simply you can create what one uh, AWS transit gateway. That is going to enable communication uh, between all the VPCs. And you can even com enable communication with our on-premise resources also. With our on-premise resources. So this is uh, easy to manage when you are dealing with the large set of VPCs. So here I have created a couple of VPCs and um, here is a VPC. If you don't know what is VPC or how to create a VPC, please refer to our uh, VPC section. So in, uh, here, so here is a one VPC, here is another VPC and here is a third VPC. So I have uh, along with default VPC, I created total three VPCs. Again, every VPC contain one subnet. So I created uh, public subnets actually, all these are. So here is a VPC A subnet, VPC B subnet, and VPC C subnet. So these VPCs contain um, main root table. This is VPC A root table, VPC B root table, and VPC C root table here. And every root table contain one uh, internet gateway that is already associated with our VPC. And that internet gateway root is added to these VPCs. For example, here if you observe, one root is there via internet gateway, it is allowing all the traffic. Now, can these uh, individual VPC resources can communicate or not is my question. By defaultly, no. How we can enable the communication? One, by using this VPC pairing connection. But I really don't want to create those many pairing connections here. So for that, I'm going to depend on transit gateway. But before that, here I have three EC2 instances which are running in three different VPCs. This is VPC A EC2 instance, this is VPC B EC2 instance, and this is VPC C EC2 instance. So I'll quickly get connected to these EC2 instances and I'll show you the communication between these by using private IP addresses. And whatever the security group I have created here, that security group is opened with uh, ICMP traffic. So ICMP, yeah, like uh, we can ping and we can verify the communication between these. So ICMP is open. So I'm trying to get connected between these EC2 instances and I'm trying to ping. So first let's get connected to this VPC A EC2 instance. So I'm taking putty. Default username is uh, EC2 iPhone user, and I'm elevating my privileges to root. Oh. So now, 
here I got connected to my first EC2 instance. So my first VPC with the 10.1 series. Let's connect to the second um, VPC EC2 instance. Putty.exe. Browse in the key pair. All right, I got connected to second EC2 instance. So what I will do. So I'm just changing the font for this one. Okay, so this is my VPC2 EC2 instance or VPC B EC2 instance. So first let's verify communication between these two. So I'm trying to ping this. Uh, machine like a 10.1.0.1.5 and um, I'm not able to ping and even from this machine also I'm trying to ping like a so ping 10.2.0.207 and it's trying to ping and it's going to fail like let me take let me test the connectivity by using telnet so I'm taking telnet 10.2.0.207 over port number 22 and it's trying to connect, it's trying to connect and uh, it's going to fail. So now, I'm just manually canceling. So there is no communication between these. Even if you're trying to get connected to this one uh, from this machine, or uh, let me quickly take this VPCC instance also. So I'm taking VPCC.exe. So I'm going to make this window to black color. I'm just changing the setting and under colors. Okay, this is my EC2 instance three. So let's try to ping the instance one. This is my uh, instance one. So I'm going to ping like a 10.1.0.125. I'm not able to ping. No, manually canceling. Let's try to ping the instance two. So ping dot ping dot two dot zero dot two zero seven. So that is not happening here. All right. So now I'm going to create a transit gateway where it can enable communication between uh, all these resources. Okay. So here. I'm navigating to VPC. So these are my VPCs. Now let's scroll down here and we have transit gateway um, option here. So this transit gateway creation um, involved with couple of steps. First step, we need to create a transit gateway. In second step, we need to attach all our VPCs to our transit gateway. The third step, we need to add routes uh, between our transit gateway and our VPC. So for that, first thing, navigate to transit gateways. So here is a transit gateway. Click on create transit gateway. And here, what is the name tag you want to give? So just give a name tag. So I'm calling this as a my transit gateway. So just given the transit gateway here. And I'm going with all the default options here, DNS support and uh, you know, default root table propagations, associations. So automatically what default root table is going to create for this. And uh, so do you want to auto accept shared attachment? This is mainly for like uh, whenever you are uh, using this transit gateway for uh, multiple AWS accounts, you can use this. So click on create transit gateway. And here you can find the status. It is in pending state. So it is going to take uh, some time. So now, once this creation got completed, let's navigate to transit gateway attachments. And here, for how many VPCs you want to create, just create that attachments. So click on create gateway attachment. So here, select the transit gateway. Again, if you want to work here, uh, so you your uh, transit gateway creation uh, must be completed. It should be available. So it is going to take a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pass the screen. All right, so here my transit gateway is created and it is in available state. Now I can create this transit gateway attachment. Let's navigate to transit gateway attachment. Let's create this transit gateway attachment for all our VPCs. 
just click on create transit gateway attachment so i'm creating for this newly created transit gateway so are you creating this attachment for your vpc or like any vpn so i'm going to select this vpc then scroll down so what is the name you want to give so i'm going to call this as a vpc a attachment and uh, just go here select uh, what are all the vpcs you want to make part of this uh, transit gateway for uh, enable communication so selecting vpc a so now within this vpc a how many subnets you want to add part here you can simply go here you can select that i have only one subnet for all the vpcs so i'm going to select that subnet click on create attachment so now uh, vpc a attachment got created let's create uh, attachment for another vpc zones create transit gateway attachment and here uh, i'm going to call it as a vpc b attachment and i'm selecting vpc b here and i'm selecting the required subnet click on create attachment now click on create transit gateway attachment and i'm selecting vpc c attachment then i'm selecting vpc c here then scroll down select get quite subnets click on create attachments all right so now vpc transit gateway got created and the transit gateway is added with the three vpc attachments vpc a vpc b and vpc c if you want to add default vpc also you can just go here create transit gateway attachment and um, here uh, you can select the default vpc also if you want to enable communication so there i have three subnets i can select all the three or like whatever the one you want to make part or you want to enable communication you can select those so the second step is completed now if you observe transit gateway root table got created here and um, so this is associated with one uh, vpc and uh, here is the rules it is now let's quickly verify whether the communication is enabled this session got disconnected so let me quickly restart the session and let me try to ping again so we have ping 10.2.0.207 and still not able to ping or not able to communicate so let's try to ping to that uh, instance 3 ping 10.3.0.36 again no the reason is so we have added transit gateway attachments but these all vpcs whatever the vpcs we have whatever the vpcs we have here so these vpcs contain root tables so that need to accept the traffic from transit gate for that how many root tables you have for the given vpcs there you need to add a root so here is my vpc a root here we need to add a root via transit gateway then only the communication is going to enable so let's navigate to roots and edit roots add a root here again you may get a doubt what destination you want to give here so so generally based on what is a vpc cider block used for all your vpc if you observe i'm using 10.1 10.2 10.3 and i'm using slash 16 subnet here so i can simply give 10.0.0.0 like a slash 8 i can give so in that case all these three comes under the cider block i'm giving here so let's navigate to vpc a navigate to roots edit roots adding root so i'm giving 10.0.0.0 slash 8 so manually you can add uh, all the subnets but instead of adding all the roots with a single sided block i am adding all that here so then click on go here transit gateway what are the transit gateway you have here select that click on save root so exactly same way add a root for vpc b and vpc c just go here i'm adding 10.0.0.0 slash 8 via transit gateway and click on save root i'm selecting vpc c edit roots all right so now 
So reverse uh, traffic access being also completed. So let's go here now a minute back whenever you try to ping this we got an error but see this from my instance one i try to ping and able to ping successfully okay so that means there is communication let's try to ping the second instance 10.2.0.207 and there you can see able to ping and even you can even try to get connected to these ec2 instance so for example i'm in instance uh, one and uh, let's try to uh, telnet so telnet is already installed so to install telnet just give m install telnet hyphen y so then after you can test the connectivity so i'm going to give telnet so then my instance 2 ip address so that is nothing but 10.2.0.207 and i'm going to connect over port number 22 and see here earlier it just stopped at this stage it's just tried but here you can see it got connected here so that means there is a communication available here and um, even you can take ssh iphone i and i have given the key pair and i'm giving ec2 iphone user at the rate 10.2.0.207 the connector is given yes and uh, it is something related to permission issue and there you can see we got connected to this machine so this gave uh, exit now i came back to this 10.1 so exactly same way so if you want to ping this third one you can even give a try so ping 10.3.0.36 10.3.0.0 there you can see able to ping that so exactly same way from this um, second uh, vpc b instance you can uh, uh, test the connectivity we start the session so i'm pinging 10.1.0.125 and there you can see i'm able to get reply so ping 10.3.0.36 so there is a communication exactly same way from vpc c also so you can ping the first instance or like the vpc uh, a instance or vpc b instance so it is going to work so how we are getting that communication just because of uh, this transit gateway we are getting all that communication so so instead of vpc pairing so this is a one stop solution to enable communication between all our vpc so that's it for uh, this video guys thanks for watching and once you're done with the lab make sure you terminate all the resources thank you